First off, we would like to thank you for the opportunity to present. We represent North Dakota State University and are initiating coverage on Grant Go Inc. We are issuing a hold recommendation with a target price of $67.49. Our hold recommendation is based on the company's strong competitive position and superior financial performance, balanced by a reasonable valuation and various risks posed to the firm and an investment in it. Graco's business consists of a manufacturing process that focuses on highly engineered, excuse me, abrasive liquid applicators and measuring prices. They sell these products to relatively small niche markets, and as we will see, have historically performed very well in those markets, which can be broken down into three encompassing categories, including industrial, contractor, and lubrication, with the breakdown of total revenues seen here. Graco also competes in three geographic segments, including the Americas, Asia Pacific, and EMEA. Now I'm going to have Nora Fumi discuss Graco's competitive positioning. Thank you, Mason. Graco benefits from low, new, low field of new entrants from economies of scale and their specialized assets. This is shown by the fact that in, the, in 20, 2012, they had a total, Graco had a total, total of 940, 40,972 different SKUs, which 90% of them sold between 0 to 1 units per day, which made up approximately half of their revenue. The Graco had a low degree of rivalry between firms because of their concentration in the niche market, with a significant R&D spending of 4.66% of sales in 2013, which is double of the competitor's R&D spending. The Graco had a low degree of threat of substitute because of the specialized product they are selling in niche market. The great example of value-added, difficult-to-substitute product is called EcoGrip. This product has 92% less airborne dust during the use. It provides high ROI to the customers who are limited by factors such as air pollution regulation and spraying delicate materials. The Graco has low to moderate bargaining power from suppliers, which is which largely driven by manufacturing equipment purchased from Mazar. Because of this, Graco has to incur more switching costs on, on the manufacturing equipment. The Greco have low degree of bargaining power from customers because they serve fragmented customers with specialized products, which means customers have to incur high switching costs when they move to another company's product. Now, I'm going to let Brad explain how Greco's strong competitive advantage translates into strong financials. Thank you, Nori. Greco has continued to show strong financial performance, which drives their revenue and earnings growth. Compared to its peers, Graco is able to provide investors with high return on equity, driven by high profit margins, asset turnover, and financial leverage. First, we'll look at their profit margins. By providing highly specialized products that provide high value to the end user and cannot be easily substituted, Graco is able to charge a premium on their products. As you can see, in the last five years, margins have been rising to 19.1% in 2013. Next, we'll look at their asset turnover. Through experience in the industry and strong customer relations, Graco is able to generate strong sales on a small asset base. In recent years, turnover has been declining as they are holding the liquid finishing business separate and receiving earnings as dividends. Generally, we see a trade-off between high profit margin and asset turnover, but Graco has impressively been able to maintain both. Looking forward, Graco's financial performance will be contingent on the capital redeployment of the recent divestiture of the liquid finishing business. Management has stated that they plan on using the estimated $570 million to reduce their debt position to nearly zero, redeploy capital and acquisitions, and continue to buy back shares. Right now, Graco is in a good position to meet their short and long-term debt obligations. Right now, their liquidity ratios are slightly inflated due to the liquid finishing business being held separate. But even at a level of $300 million in cash reserves, Graco is in a good position to meet their short-term debt obligations. Graco is significantly more leveraged than its peer group due to its ability to generate, uh, due to its ability to cover its interest payments they are in a good position and this leverage drives their ROE. Next, on to earnings quality. Historically and compared to its peers, Graco has a low accruals ratio. By that and the measures outlined on the table behind me, we are confident in the quality of Graco's earnings. 
Historically, Graco has been able to transform their strong financial performance into continued revenue and earnings growth. Now Doug will walk you through our valuation and explain our forecast. Thank you, Brad. We determined our type of price target of $67.49 per share using a discounted cash flow model. Supported that value with a relative price target determined by multiples of comparable firms. And lastly, incorporated the Benjamin Graham valuation model as a sanity check of our valuation assumptions. We'll start out with our revenue forecast, which structurally consisted of three components. Quarter 4, 2014, which was forecasted using our ARIMA model, two periods of expansion level growth, and one period of revenue shock. In the industrial segment, we are forecasting 11% growth driven by new product development targeting technology to track and transmit data through their equipment, similar to the recently developed Insight and Informer products. We see slower growth in the Eurozone and China as headwinds in this segment. The industrial segment took up 73% and 75% of revenue in EMEA and Asia-Pacific, respectively, in the first three quarters of 2014. So they're more exposed to this risk, but would also benefit from a strong domestic economy. In the contractor segment, we are forecasting 13% growth, driven by new product development and further expansion into the DIY line, as well as a strong domestic economy with a strong automotive and housing sector. We see slower than expected end use conversions to spray applicators in developing markets as headwinds to this, to this segment, as well as slower economic growth abroad. Lastly, in the lubrication segment, we are forecasting 6% growth, driven by further expansion into the industrial lubrication segment, as well as being limited by a slower growth in the Chinese mining end market, which could continue to struggle due to slow growth in China. Moving on to gross margin, we forecast our cost of goods sold as a percent of sales to decline at a rate consistent with the firm's historic trend. This is driven by economies of scale due to further expansion into new markets and acquisitions. For operating expenses, we are forecasting research and development as a constant 5% of sales and other operating expenses to also decline at a rate consistent with the firm's historic trend, also driven by economies of scale. We calculated our weighted average cost of capital based off of a Fama French three-factor model and a weighted average yield of the firm's debt. And we chose to use an H model to determine our terminal value to allow our model to be less sensitive to our terminal growth rate assumption and to allow a longer period for mature growth, until mature growth. Currently, Greco is trading at relatively high multiples compared to the market, its peer group, and its most comparable competitor. Obviously, it is not favorable to be trading at higher multiples than comparable firms, but we believe this valuation is driven largely by the firm's history of superior financial performance and the expectation that they will continue to perform this way going forward. Based on our valuation assumptions, we believe this expectation seems reasonable and supports our whole rating. Lastly, we incorporated the Benjamin Grand Valuation Method not as a measure of intrinsic value, but as a check of our growth rate assumptions. So using our EPS growth rate, we get a value of $88.42 using this model. This relatively high value shows that our assumptions seem reasonable given Graham's criteria. I will now have Siyang speak about investment risks. Thanks, Tom. Greco's revenue is driven by high margin derived from premium prices. So they are highly sensitive to consumer demand. Any lag in technological advancement or mismatch of new product development and end user needs would threaten their operation through a decreasing profitability. Gregor therefore Jim Brenner will retire in this year. This change would pose a risk to management performance. Gregor's management has stated that some cash from the sale of the liquid finishing business will go towards new acquisitions. And there is a risk to a possible issue with the FTC and acquiring new targets at a reasonable price. Greco recently has made some acquisitions in the oil and gas market, and with decline in the oil prices recently, these acquisitions may struggle in the short term. With roughly 43% of revenue derived internationally, Greco's total revenue is subject to risk of significant currency fluctuations and a continued appreciation of US dollar against other currencies. Because management has stated they do not intend to hedge the exchange rate, Greco is fairly exposed in this type of risk. Then, Mason will conclude our presentation. Thank you, Sion. When considering the positive aspects of the firm, as well as the range of values seen here by our aforementioned multiples, as well as the sensitivity to analysis to our DCF, we believe our target price of $67.49 is well placed. This translates into a hold recommendation based on a 15% margin of safety, which gives you the range of values seen here. Now we want to thank you for your time and open the floor to questions. Uh,
Thanks, guys. Um, kind of my first question kind of relates to the quality of Great Coast Management Team. Sure. And uh, during your analysis, did you guys assess the quality of Great Coast Management Team? And if you did, how you went about that? And kind of how you would rate, rate it? Uh, we started with their management team by looking at um, their experience. We'll pull up. Um, here are some of the things we looked at. We looked at um, their upper level management experience, their experience with RACO. Um, so you can see that at the top. Um, we also looked at their board of directors and analyzed them and found, uh, except for their CEO, uh, the rest, other eight members are independent. Um, and they were also very experienced with an average of 14.4 years um, of experience. I'll give you guys and then I do just want to also add that we did look at things like management compensation. And management compensation is very in line with a strong performing management group. Graco focuses a lot on um, options and other equity in the company as a part of their compensation package which we believe leads to strong incentives for management performance going forward and a longer term view of growth of the company. I have a question on your uh, financial modeling assumptions. Sure. You the operating margin expanding pretty aggressively from about 28% uh, all the way up to 32% by 2019. Uh, you touched on economies of scale and helping, but what factors uh, would cause your uh, assumptions to miss uh, your, your target. All right, so this is driven mostly by uh, economies of scale due to their acquisitions and their expansion into other markets. Um, so currently they are targeting some markets such as uh, oil and gas, and uh, there are a few other similar markets to where they are now in terms of uh, uh, engineering and manufacturing processes. So their goal is typically to find the sort of companies where they can leverage their capacity and reduce costs, and that's what's driving this. Uh, something that would not allow that to happen would be uh, you know, poor, uh, poor decisions in their acquisitions and uh, really a, not a clear understanding of the sort of end markets that they're getting into with their acquisitions or their market expansions. Disposing of their uh, liquid finishing business and receiving proceeds. How does that transaction factor into your outlook of the, of the company and what impact did that have, if any, on your valuation uh, of all? Right, so the liquid finishing business, uh, they'll have some 570 million in net proceeds, and uh, that's going to go to reducing debt, uh, possibly to new acquisitions, and to continue their share purchases. Uh, and also with the with them losing that business, they're also losing losing those dividend payments that they're receiving from the liquid finishing business. Uh, in our income statement uh, forecast, we have that those dividends are uh, decreasing from the company, so that's affecting our earnings forecast. Uh, in our cash flow model, that actually didn't make a that did not uh, show up in our cash flow model, but it, it was in our uh, earnings forecast. What are your investment risks you talk about? Um, so first, I just want to kind of touch on that overall. Uh, R&D spending was a big driver for them for that period. So they actually continued their R&D spending through um, kind of that big recession. And you can see that you know compared to a lot of the other firms in the industry, their revenues recovered very quickly, um, which you know we believe had a lot to do with their R&D and continued expansion of all of their products and meeting end user needs. Um, 
As far as we were aware, there wasn't a lot of adjustment as far as Great Coast prices go. Um, I know we did, and I could show up, show this. So, um, for instance, we did look at well, a Greco product versus Nordson and actually contacted both companies. And, like, for instance, in this market, there wasn't a lot of differentiation in the price for the two competing firms. And so that kind of was our main drivers for that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. I have two unrelated questions.
uh, should be able to be profitable for a longer term than other companies. So conceptually, yes, it's there, but not there uh, specifically. Thank you.